Hello and welcome to the Scroll Versions Crash Course. I'm Kyle from K15T Software. Scroll Versions is an add-on for Atlassian Confluence that lets you plan, author, manage, and release documentation directly from Confluence. It has powerful functionality for version management, variant management, duplicate page titles, and much more. In this crash course, we'll walk you through its core features and show you how to get started quickly. But first, a quick note about the entire Scroll add-ons family. The Scroll add-ons for Atlassian Confluence power painless content collaboration. They allow teams to write, manage, and publish content collaboratively, with features for multiple versions and variants in a single space, multiple languages in a single space, exporting to numerous formats such as PDF, MS Word, HTML, and more, publishing to the web, and guidance for authors. Once Scroll Versions is installed on your system by your Confluence administrator, it needs to be activated in the spaces you want to use it. To do this, click the Scroll Add-ons link. This brings up an overview page that shows you which features are enabled in this space. The more Scroll Add-ons you have installed, the more features you'll see here and in the navigation bar on the left side. Okay, let's start to version this space by clicking Manage and then New Version. This page is where you manage your versions, so let's create a version. Now when creating a version, we can define its preceding version, its color, which is used for visualization or coordination, its version name, description, and release date. Since this is the first version, we'll call it 1.0 and write a placeholder description. Let's create a second version and call it 2.0. Now for the preceding version, we select 1.0. This means that all content of 1.0 will be inherited by 2.0 on the fly. Changes made to 1.0 will be reflected in 2.0 as well unless you edit the page in version 2.0. That's called a fallback. Let's switch back to the space. We can already see that the UI is different with scroll versions enabled. Currently, we're using the Confluence default theme. Scroll versions is compatible with the Confluence bundled themes as well as refined wiki and the enterprise theme. And once you've activated versions in a space, you'll be given a quick tour of the UI elements. Confluence admins can disable these pop-up hints. In the version picker, authors can select their working version. In the page byline, you can find all the information about your current page, including page versions, variants, and workflow information. The scroll versions menu stores all space-related information. For example, you can compare versions or even spaces, or publish a version directly to make it available to your readers. Finally, the scroll versions dropdown is where you'll find all page-related actions, such as comparing pages, converting a page to unversioned, rescheduling certain versions, and much more. Let's add a page as if we were adding a new feature, then edit a page as if we were changing a feature, then remove a page as if dropping a feature. Now first off, always make sure you've got the version you want to work in selected in the version picker. For us, that's 2.0. Create a new Confluence page. All right, let's call our new page new 2.0 feature. And add some content. Then save the page, and that's it. You've added a new feature. Now let's edit an existing feature that we're changing in version 2.0. Just edit the Confluence page normally. Finally, we want to remove a feature from 2.0. So we'll open that page, then click Tools, and then Delete. This doesn't actually delete the page entirely, though. It just marks it as unavailable in the current version. OK, now we've made various changes in various places around the space. Switching back and forth between versions wouldn't really give us a useful overview of these changes, so instead we'll use the Compare Versions feature to get a clear look at the differences between the versions. Now once we've picked two versions to compare, we'll see a tree of pages with additional information about both. Personally, I prefer to use the list view and use the filters to track down the info I'm looking for. So in this case, I filtered the results to show only pages that have been changed between these two versions. So far, we've seen how to create versions and author within them. Since I'm both an author and an admin in this system, I was able to do everything. In practice, though, your user's experience will be a bit different. 
This is where roles and permissions come in. Score versions defines the following roles, doc admins, authors, and reviewers. Doc admins are basically space admins for scroll add-ons. They administrate scroll add-ons, create versions and variants, and can do everything an author and reviewer can do. Authors can create and edit pages and versions, just like we did earlier. Reviewers can switch between versions and comment on pages, but can't edit content. So if you have scroll versions workflow feature implemented, they can also review and approve content. Of course, there's one more role in the system that we don't actually see on this screen, which is the readers, who can only access the public version of the content. That group includes all users who can view the space and aren't assigned to the roles I've already mentioned. You can assign user groups or individual users to these roles. If you start from scratch and you don't define any users for the roles, space administrators are treated as doc admins, users with edit permissions are treated as authors, and users with view permissions are treated as reviewers. And that's our preferred setup as well. Doc admins can set edit restrictions on the version level. All authors can still view the restricted versions, but can't edit anymore unless they're specifically allowed to in the restrictions. This is especially useful for larger teams where certain people are responsible for specific versions. From the version management screen, you can open the actions menu for any version and click manage restrictions. And from here, you can add restrictions on a group or user level. You can click hide, which is also in the actions menu to hide a version, which removes it from the version picker. Here's a tip. If you combine this with edit restrictions, you can freeze versions. Hide the version you want to freeze and restrict it to a group with no members. The version won't be displayed in the UI and won't be editable until it's unfrozen by an admin. This is useful for content that needs to be archived, for example. In addition to versioning, Scroll Versions offers powerful variant management functionality too. The difference between versions and variants can be a little confusing though, so we'll illustrate it using an ebook reader as an example. Our e-reader company offers two models, the standard e-reader and a next generation model. The standard one is version 1.0, and the next gen is newer version 2.0 with a higher screen resolution. Each of these readers is available either with Wi-Fi only or with Wi-Fi plus 3G connectivity. These options are the two variants. Variants are defined by attributes. In this example, the device's connectivity option is the attribute, and the options themselves, Wi-Fi only or Wi-Fi plus 3G, are the values of that attribute. In the documentation for both versions of the e-reader, you'll have some content that's only relevant for Wi-Fi, some that's only relevant for 3G, and a whole lot that's common between the two. So you'd set up an attribute connectivity with two values, Wi-Fi and 3G. Then you define variants for each of these, and you can use these variants to set a whole page or specific pieces of content to only display in the relevant variant. This means that you don't need to duplicate common content, you just focus on the differences. Let's run through that with our PDF exporter documentation. We'll use variants to differentiate content between the deployment models, namely server and cloud. From the scroll add-on screen, go to the attributes menu and click new attribute. Put in the name, in our case deployment model, and add a description if needed. Then put in the values, which are the conditions for your content. For us, that's cloud and server. You can type them both in at the same time and hit enter. Everything separated by spaces will be added as individual values. Now that we've created the building blocks for our variants, we need to make the variants themselves. In the Variants menu, create a new variant. First, we'll make the cloud variant. When this one's selected, we want the reader to be able to see all the content that is shared between both variants, meaning content that isn't specifically marked as server only, as well as all of the cloud only content. So we select both the unset condition and the cloud condition. If a variant has the unset condition, it'll show content that isn't defined in any variants. Now we do the same thing for our server variant, except we pick unset and server as the conditions. Let's create a page with content that's only intended for cloud. After we've saved the page, we need to add the cloud attribute to it.
Now let's do the same thing, but for server-only content. As you can see, the UI now has an additional drop-down in the content management bar that lets us select which variant we want to highlight. Variants can be applied on whole pages and also on a granular level, right down to individual words using the conditional content macro. Insert the conditional content macro, define which variant it's for, put your content in, and off you go. For authors, conditional content blocks are highlighted, and display information about the attributes and variants. Switching to the cloud variant, we see that the page is displayed normally in the page tree. If we switch to the server variant, we see the page is grayed out of the page tree, indicating that it's not available in the selected variant. When we're ready to make our version documents available to readers, we could export them to Word, PDF, HTML, and other formats using the various scroll exporter add-ons. We could also use scroll version's publishing feature, which we'll detail here. You can access this directly from the UI in the scroll version's menu, and also in the scroll add-ons version management screen. When publishing, there are three approaches. Publishing to the same space, publishing to a brand new space, and publishing to an existing space. Publishing to the same space is typically used in a software as a service model, where you only ever have one version of your documentation available to your customers. It allows you to use the same space for both authoring and presenting your content. However, you'll need to define doc admins and authors to control who sees what. When publishing to the same space, you can take full advantage of the public view to get a reader's perspective of your currently published content, instead of having to log in with a different reader account. As soon as the publishing process is complete, readers will be able to access the published content by visiting the space. This is why we call this the public master space approach. Publishing to a new space allows you to have every version of your documentation available in its own space. This is beneficial when you have customers using various versions of your product, all of whom need access to the relevant documentation for their needs. This is the method that Atlassian uses with scroll versions to serve their own documentation, by the way. Because no readers will ever need to access your authoring space, you can keep it private. You don't need to configure specific permissions. This is the private master space approach. It also has additional benefits. Publishing is faster, and the navigation page tree is calculated more rapidly in the authoring space. You can also publish your latest version to an existing space and archive earlier versions. This is a blend between the other two methods. Your latest documentation will always be available under the same URL, and earlier versions will still be accessible to customers if needed. Once you've hit Publish, you can configure a number of options for your publishing action. For example, whether or not to send notifications for page updates. You can preview your content before you publish it, which will show you what's been changed and about to go live, much like the Compare Versions function. You can also skip the preview and publish directly if you want to speed the process up a bit. However, we always recommend previewing first, especially when publishing a lot of changes at once. Only your needs and preferences can determine which publishing method's best for you. All three are popular among our customers. For our documentation needs here at K15T, the private master space approach works best. As an additional option, you can publish to a remote confluence system if that system has the scroll remote publishing endpoint installed. This is ideal for if you have a private authoring Confluence instance in a secured environment and a publicly accessible Confluence instance for your readers. Now that we've made some changes to our content and published it within the same space, let's have a look at what it looks like live. From the scroll versions menu, click Switch to Public View. Note though that using the public view it only makes sense if you're using the public master space approach. It can't show the live version of documentation published to separate spaces. The orange bar at the top tells you that you're in public view and shows which version is live and when it was published. Other than this orange bar, you're now seeing your content exactly as a normal reader would see it. Let's see how our changes look from a reader's perspective. The new feature we added is there, the one we removed is no longer there, and the one we edited is indeed changed. 
If we switch between our deployment variants, we can see that the content we created for cloud only is only visible when we've selected the cloud variant, and the same goes for the server variant and server content respectively. This crash course covered the basics of versions, but there's a lot more possible once you really dig in. We'll be adding feature videos for more in-depth information as time goes on, but if you have questions now, our support team is ready to help you out. Thanks for watching, and from our team to yours, happy versioning.